I have been asked so many times in the past, do you know Python? And my answer always has to be no. And it's just, it's such a disappointing answer. You know, people are like, oh, she has so much potential, but she doesn't know Python. I am changing that today. So today I am going to be starting a 24 hour course in Python. Woohoo! More coding! I want to learn more languages and Python is a very widely used programming language. Some of you may know that I recently have been doing some work in R for my actuarial statistics courses. I've also done a little bit of coding in MATLAB, VBA and PowerShell before but I don't have extensive experience and Python, I've seen a teeny bit of, but I don't remember much. So let's view it as if I am starting completely from scratch. I am a complete Python novice. The course I'm doing is called Learn to Code for Data Analysis. And essentially it's gonna be practicing data analysis, making use of Python. Considering my job is analyzing data sets as an actuary, I think it's gonna be pretty useful to me in the long run. A quick disclaimer, this course is actually part of an online learning platform called the Skills Toolkit. And this has been launched by the Department for Education in the UK, who I'm actually working with on some Instagram posts at the moment. I'm doing some sponsored work with them. However, this video is not sponsored. I am not being paid. I just thought it would be fun to share my experience learning Python. I couldn't miss out on sharing this journey with you guys. I'm always in awe of techie people. I want to be a techie person. All right, so with that, I think I have managed to download everything I need. There was quite a lot of packages and data sets to download to start off the course, but I think we're there. I've just read the first few introductory pages of the course and it is starting from the basics for beginners as you would expect. I think I will probably get through the first part of the course quite quickly considering my previous coding experience but also I'm actually really glad that it's taking its time to explain some of the underlying principles of coding that are kind of universal to all languages because even though some of it is really obvious stuff a lot of it I'm not so confident in because when I did learn to code I never did a properly taught course I just plunged into it. I had to learn it quite quickly at the end of my summer before my third year of uni when I was doing astrophysics that was my first proper coding experience and I literally just didn't really stop to think about what I was doing and I didn't care as long as my code functioned and I think some of the detail got lost in that. Also I forgot to mention at the start that I'm obviously not doing 24 hours in one go. <laughs> I'm probably gonna do an hour or so now and then just pick it up over the next few weeks and hopefully complete it Within eight weeks, I think is the recommended time frame for doing the course, but I'll see how I get on and balance it alongside my work and other studies. Alrighty, I have been familiarizing myself with Jupyter Notebook. <laughs> Do I know enough to explain it to you guys yet? No. It looks neat. It looks intuitive enough. There's different cells which have different parts of the code in. And up the top, there are options to run cells individually or to run all of the cells at once. Okay, I am finishing up because I'm tired and I want to go read my book and it's a Sunday evening so I'm taking it easy before my working week starts tomorrow. Yeah, I have finished the first section of the course, week one of the course. Recapping what I learned, what did I learn? I know what sort of variable names are allowed, Python is case sensitive apparently just like R so we've got used to that now. Do you know what I don't really understand? 
computer setups. What is my code actually doing? When I press run, where are my commands going? So it's been a little while since I last spoke to you guys in this video, a few weeks maybe. I just underestimated how much work it would be to learn two languages at the same time because I've been learning R as well and it's a lot, you know, the syntax gets a bit confusing, but we're getting there. I have made progress on this Python course. I am now a good 15 hours of the way through the 24 hour course. I thought I would sit down and give you a demo and kind of show you the stuff I've learned so far in Python and also sit down and explain some of the principles of coding from what I have learned because I've been investigating all my questions. I've been like, what the hell is this code even doing? Where are the commands even going? How is this translated? I'm going to try talk it through and if I get anything wrong, please correct me in the comments because I'd love to learn more. Okay, so what you can see here is a fresh Jupyter notebook, which I have not written in yet. So this is a cell. I can add more cells if I like by pressing the plus button. At the moment, these cells are set to code mode. Oh yeah, here we go. Cell type can either be code, markdown. I have no idea what the third one does. Markdown is just gonna be a comment or a heading. So to do a big heading, I think you type double hashtag and to do a smaller heading, single hashtag. Oh no, I got that the wrong way around. <laughs> if I type normally without hashtags, this is just normal text comments you can put in prose around your code this is a cell where you type your code from pandas import asterisk that is saying from the pandas module which is a collection of pieces of code it contains objects and their associated methods and attributes which are very useful for data analysis Asterisk just means all. So I want to import everything from the pandas module. In pandas, there are these objects called data frames that are basically tables, but work really well for data analysis one way or another. Data frame equals read underscore Excel. This is a function, read underscore Excel. In the brackets, I am putting the argument in this case, it is the name of the Excel file that I want to read in values from. This is just an Excel file that was part of the course that I have been doing. It is data of tuberculosis rates in different countries. Let's run it and have a look, shall we? Oh no. Oh, I need to put in .xls. Cool, so I've now got all this data from the XLS file into a data frame and we've got country, the population of the country and tuberculosis deaths. So if we put data frame, specify the column, so TB deaths dot mean, it will give me the mean of the TB deaths column. I could equally do that for population as well. So yeah, basically data frames have associated methods. For example, you could do dot mean to find the mean of one column in the data frame. They also have associated attributes. So you could do data frame dot columns gives me the columns of the data frame as an output. You can create new columns in the data frame. So here I've done TB deaths divided by population of a country to get the TB death rate for each row of my data frame. And now I've reworked it so that here TB death rate is added as a new column in the same data frame. So that's just a little snippet of some of the stuff that I have been learning how to do in Python. I feel like I haven't done any real codey stuff like for loops, but we'll get there. But let's just take a step back a minute. So when coding, you are basically telling your computer what to do. You are giving your computer 
some commands. However, the trouble is, I can't just speak to my computer, I can't just say in human language, hi, please can you generate me the average death rate? It doesn't understand human language. The computer just has a series of on and off switches within its processing unit and they need to be told what to do with a series of zeros and ones. So computers can only understand machine code. Binary code is just those of combinations of zeros and ones that the computer can understand. However, I don't know binary. I wouldn't know how to write in binary. Hi computer, please calculate me the average death rate. However, I can write in a source code such as Python. A source code is a code which is human readable. So I am able to write and understand this source code and then it gets compiled or interpreted into machine code which my computer can understand. Now I could write my source code anywhere, like in any old text editor, right? But when writing this code, it would be quite handy to have something which can compile or interpret the code for me and also something which can help me debug the code. If I've made a mistake in my code, I, I want something that can easily tell me what's malfunctioning and why it's not working. That is where the IDE comes in. This is the integrated development environment. Integrated development environments are just made to make life easier for anyone who's writing a program. An integrated development environment contains all the things I listed. It will compile or interpret your code for you. It will literally have an editor in it where you can write your source code and also a debugger. There are lots of different integrated development environments out there. And while I've been learning Python, I've been writing in Jupyter Notebook. From what I understand, Jupyter Notebook is a form of IDE, although I think what defines an IDE is a bit of a blurry definition. Jupyter Notebook is a computational notebook. Apparently, computational notebooks are increasing in popularity at the moment, and it's just an environment where you can write your code, but like embed it within a wider document. All within this computational notebook, you can have your code, your explanatory text, you can have plots in there. It's just really easy and centralized. Okay, I'm gonna leave this video here, but I have had fun learning some of the basics of Python. I've still got quite a long way to go, I won't lie, but I'll keep you guys updated with my Python learning journey. Thanks for watching. Give the video a like, subscribe to my channel, follow my Instagram, and I'll see you soon with another video. Bye.